a darling and bring me a cup of coffee? Yes, ma'am. Please step on me. Hey, everyone. It's Sevi. I've decided that if I ever wanted to be a Genshin character in Save Hat, my dream in life is to become Chiyori's personal assistant. She's out to cut not just fashion trends and enemies, but also our egos. And for that, I would be first in line. If you're up for that too, then to help you learn more about her, I'll be covering her kit and talents, constellations, best artifact and weapon builds, team comps, and tips. Let's begin. And my aesthetics follow their own rules. Chiori's normal attacks consist of a 4-hit combo with a 20 stamina cost charge attack. By default, they deal physical damage but can be infused with Geo by her skill. Without C6, her normal attacks only scale on her attack stat, whereas her skill and burst-related damage scale on both her defense and attack stat, giving her a dual scaling nature. Still, Chiori's defense multipliers have a bigger impact, so you generally want to prioritize defense stats. But the advantage of dual scaling is the added flexibility as she can benefit from either attack or defense stats from her artifact weapons, teammates, and various external sources. Moving on, casting Shiori's skill makes her dash forward and deal geo damage in an upward sweep. If you tap it, she instantly dashes towards the nearest target enemy, whereas holding it allows her to manually choose the dash direction. Either way, this summons the Tomoto doll, which is a geo construct that stays on field to deal periodic geo damage every 3.6 seconds for 17 seconds, dealing a total of 5 hits in its duration. Additionally, if another teammate's geo construct was created before or after the first Tomoto doll was summoned, she then summons a second second Tomoto doll, which has the exact same duration and damage as the original, practically doubling her Tomoto damage output. As such, it requires specific teammates to activate both her Tomotos or her first constellation, while some teams really will be strictly limited to only one. One nice thing about her dolls is that they won't easily get destroyed, especially by certain heavy attacks by bosses, unlike other Geo constructs like Zhongli's Pillar or Albedo's Flower. Furthermore, upon unlocking her Ascension 1 talent, her skill dash can trigger additional effects based on the follow-up action. Tapping the skill button again after dashing will cause you to switch to the next character in your roster. Your party then gets to seize the moment effect for 8 seconds, wherein Chiori deals a coordinated geo skill damage when the active character uses their normal, charged, or plunging attack. Though this can only be triggered every 2 seconds, and is also limited at triggering only twice during this effect's duration. For a stylish entrance with some extra plunge damage, you can also aim her skill in the air so your next character can switch mid-air, then enter the battle with a plunging attack. This interestingly also marks the first character to enable a mid-air teammate switching mechanic. On the other hand, if Chiori uses a normal attack after her skill dash, this triggers the tailoring effect, wherein her sword attacks gain Geo Infusion for 5 seconds. This can enable a brief on-field DPS playstyle, but once the infusion ends, it's best to switch her out and maximize your other character's field time or abilities. If you don't press either her skill or normal attack button as well after a skill dash, she will eventually trigger this Geo Infusion effect by default. Note that this infusion can be overridden if other teammates with infusion abilities are present, such as C6 Ben, Chongyun, and Candace. Basically, if you're using her mainly as an off-field unit, just tap her skill twice, whereas if you want her to have on-field time to deal geo attacks, use her skill plus a normal attack combo instead. For her A4 passive, Chiori will gain a 20% geo damage bonus when a different party member creates a geo construct. Unfortunately, she can't trigger this passive for herself by creating Tomoto. Chiori's burst is probably the simplest part of her kit. It simply deals geo damage in an AoE and has a low energy cost of 50, and a fairly short 13.5 second cooldown. It deals a decent amount of damage for a low cost burst. In some rotations and teams where you're aiming to minimize Chiori's on field time, you'll want to cast her burst before you use her skill to switch to another teammate. If you cast her burst after casting her skill dash, that will lead to triggering her Geo infusion effect by default. Then Chiori's exploration passive is fairly unique as she can increase your party's movement speed as long as a teammate has leveled up their fashion by wearing an outfit other than their default outfit. It's not limited to a certain certain time of day, unlike other characters with similar effects, though this won't take effect in Domains and Spiral Abyss. For Chiori's talent priority, her skill should be your main priority, whether as an on-field or off-field unit, as her Tomoto will contribute a majority of her damage either way. This is followed by her burst level. If you're trying to use her on-field, you can level up her normal attacks accordingly, but just remember that the multipliers still scale on her attack without C6. If you're not using an on-field playstyle, just ignore the normal attack level and save resources. Then for her farming list, Chiori's ascension materials include Coppelia's boss material, the Dendrobium Inazuma specialty, and Spectre Dragon. Drops. Then her talents will need the Light series, more Spectre Drops, and the Lightless Silk String from the All-Devouring Narwhal. 
Chiori's kit is already solid and cohesive at C0, but let's see what her constellations can add. C1 increases the AoE of Chiori's Tomoto range, a small quality of life upgrade. But more importantly, as long as you have another Geo teammate, her skill now triggers additional effects. First, Chiori's second Tomoto no longer requires another Geo construct to be summoned. And second, Chiori can also trigger her Ascension 4 passive's Geo damage bonus by herself. There are two main ways you can view this. If Chiori is already used in a team where another Geo teammate creates a construct, then this makes very little difference. On the other hand, this also means that she can now have the second Tomoto in double Geo teams where you originally couldn't create it. As such, depending on your team, it can either mean close to nothing or be a very significant increase to her personal damage potential. I don't want you to think this is necessary to get even if you plan to use her in teams that have no other Geo Construct source as she will still be functional and very solid in those cases. And really, if you're only or often just using her in teams with another Geo Construct unit, then it's most definitely not worth it. But if you really want to remove that limitation to her damage potential and make it consistent in various teams, then this is the constellation that enables that. C2 makes Chiori summon Kinu, another type of automaton doll, every 3 seconds for 10 seconds after casting her burst. It deals 170% of the Tomoto's original damage and is considered as skill damage. Basically, a damage boost for Chiori, and it also incentivizes you to burst every rotation. C3 increases her skill level by 3, boosting both her Tomoto and Kinu's damage. For C4, the simplest way to describe it is that it practically copies her C2 effect and applies it on her skill now. After using either of Chiori's skill's follow-up effects, she also summons Akinu to deal coordinated geo damage to enemies whenever the active character deals normal, charged, or plunging attacks. Just note it still has trigger and cooldown limitations. C5 increases her ultimate level by 3. And finally, C6 does two things. First, it allows her to decrease her skill's cooldown down to only 4 seconds. Second, it now adds a huge defense scaling multiplier to her normal attacks, but not to her charged or plunging attacks. Both of these effects synergize to now enable her as a true on-field DPS, as she can now chain her skill casts to prolong her Geo infusion and normal attack combos. Next, let's take a look at how to build her, starting with artifacts. Her stat build is very straightforward with a defense sense, geo damage goblet, and crit circlet that'll give you a good crit ratio. An attack sense can still be viable if at better substats, but should definitely be replaced once you have a good defense sense. For substats, you want crit, defense, and attack in order of priority. A bit of ER can be fine as well just to cover slightly more energy hungry scenarios. Her energy recharge target can be very low to nothing. Due to her burst's low energy cost, you'll get it back fairly quickly depending on your team and energy sources, and even then, it's perfectly fine to just burst every other rotation. When it comes to sets, the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams and 4-piece Golden Troop are her two general best in slots. The difference is generally marginal in that it's mainly a substat game and choosing which is more efficient to farm for you. However, the Husk has an advantage of having more compatibility with her on-field playstyle and being farmable in the strong box. But if you're living in the Marichose domain, then you're probably getting a lot of Golden Troop pieces in the process. Too. Until then, you can stick to two piece, two piece sets of defense, geo damage, attack, or skill damage, and just choose the ones with the best substats. There are other potential full sets that I'd recommend less, though, as they come with more caveats. The four piece Nighttime's Whispers activated geo damage buff only lasts 10 seconds, which won't buff the Tomoto's full duration, and more importantly, the extra geo damage bonus from having a crystallized shield deactivates if Chiori is off field, which further restricts its potential. At the very least, it's best max if she's played on field. Then the Marichose's crit rate buff condition would want Farina in the party, which narrows Chiori's team options, and the stacks only last 5 seconds and need to be refreshed on field, which isn't as feasible if you have another on field DPS you can't switch out of, like Ito. As such, I would still mainly recommend either the Husk or Golden Troop sets. Moving on to Chiori's weapon recommendations. Thankfully, we have a very accessible but relatively great baseline weapon for her, the Harbinger of Dawn. Its low base attack isn't a big disadvantage, whereas the crit damage substat is pretty good, and it gives a fairly big crit rate buff as long as you keep her above 90% HP. That's easy to maintain as an off-field unit, and even if you on-field her, she'll most likely have a shield or teammate or crystallized shield active to prevent damage. And as a 3-star weapon, it's very cheap to level up if you're not that abundant in resources yet. One major anti-synergy to watch out for is if you have Farina on the team, as the buff uptime can have inconsistency issues due to her HP drain. The other potential free-to-play
play weapon is the Cinnabar Spindle, which is close to the Harbinger of Dawn's potential. However, only old players have it due to being a limited event weapon. At least with the Harbinger of Dawn being available and comparable, then it really doesn't matter as much. However, note that the Spindle's skill damage buffing passive has a 1.5 second cooldown. So if you summon two Tomotos closely, such that their attack intervals are within 1.5 seconds of each other, then the Spindle will not buff the other Tomotos damage, thereby also limiting its potential and making it worse than Harbinger of Dawn in some cases. But with the right timing to give them at least 1.5 second intervals in between hits, it's definitely possible to allow the Spindle to buff both Tomotos damage. As such, I recommend you to test and see what the right timing is for your own scenario and teammates. Another good 4 star weapon, albeit locked behind the battle pass, is the Wolf Fang. It gives useful crit rate and damage percent bonuses for her skill and burst and has a stackable crit rate buff. However, it's important to note that this crit rate stacking effect can only activate on field, which limits the stacks gained in rotations where she mostly stays off field. The burst crit rate buff is also useless since her burst only deals one hit anyway. It'll take a high refinement copy to be an increase versus Harbinger of Dawn, and even then, it's a relatively small increase. The Uraku Misugiri is her signature and best weapon with a huge crit damage substat, defense buff, and damage bonuses for both her normal attack and skill, so it accommodates her different playstyles. It's a pretty sizable increase over all other 4 star and 5 stars, especially since its effects are very tailor made for her. Of course, it's up to you if you're willing to risk it on whatever current weapon banner it's on, but don't feel pressured to feel like you have to get it. A good alternative 5 star is the Primordial Jade Cutter, which basically just gives a huge crit rate substat and an attack buff based on the user's HP. It's generally a bit better than her free to play options and other non signature 5 star weapons, though. Outside of those 5 stars, the Haran, Miss Splitter, and Splendor can all still work as general crit and damage bonus stat sticks, albeit with restrictions to their max potential. At R1, they're also generally closer to the Harbinger of Dawn's damage potential than her R1 signature weapon. Now for her team synergies. One of the main things to consider, especially at C0, is which teammates produce Geo Constructs to bring out her second Tomoto, since that's a significant boost for her personal damage. Those units would be Zhongli, Ito, Albedo, Ningguang, and Geo MC, making them all good contenders for her teams. However, she can still be good even in teams where she won't have her second Tomoto out, so you shouldn't completely avoid teams where that is the case. Geo Focus teams also unlock the Geo Resonance effect, which can boost your team's damage by having a shield active. You can achieve this by slotting a dedicated shielder like Zhongli or another elemental shielder. The other way is by including a pyro, hydro, electro, or cryo unit that can reliably apply their element for Geo to trigger crystallized shields on, since that still counts in activating the Geo resonance. Either way, many of these team archetypes will be geocentric, but of course, there's always room for variations. Now let's check out some sample team templates. One of Chiyori's expected and highly synergistic comps is with the Ito Goro combo to create a triple or full Geo team. Here, she acts very similarly to Albedo as an off field DPS and battery for Ito, albeit being an upgrade in damage output. With Chiyori, this should be one of Ito's best team variants. Chiyori can benefit from Goro's defense and Geo related buffs, and she'll generally want to be placed before Ito and use her skill to quick swap into him. If you have Noelle, she can also take Ito's place in this template. Since Noelle's infusion doesn't disappear, effects that need Chiori on field to trigger are easier to maintain, like the Wolf Fang or Marichose set. However, Noelle doesn't have her own Geo construct, so Chiori's second Tomoto can only be unlocked by C1 or a fourth Geo unit that creates a construct. With three Geo teammates, Goro's buffing potential is also maximized. Chiori's skill can't snapshot his defense buff though, so she'll keep it if she stays on field, but it will no longer apply once she swaps off. At least, some of Goro's other buffs do affect off-field party members, so Chiori's off-field playstyle still has significant benefits from him, and Goro will be mainly buffing your on-field DPS. Another team template is a general double Geo core that consists of Chiori plus another Geo, then two flex slots. Your Geo teammate can be a DPS like Noel, Navia, or Ningguang, who can assume on field time or let Chiori quick swap in for some field time of her own. Then the flex slots can be supports that will buff your on field DPS unit's damage or also contribute damage from off field. At least when it comes to buffers, Chiori's dual scaling allows her to be flexible. So, whichever the other Geo unit will want more, whether attack, defense, or damage bonus buffs, will also benefit Chiori. On the other hand, you can use the double Geo core as a supportive role for an elemental on field DPS. And 
and flex unit pair, like a pyro vape unit with a hydro applicator, a double hydro combo, a quicken pair, and so on. Our main options for the second geo here would be Zhongli, Albedo, or Geo Traveler for the off field support and damage utilities. If your on field unit is a normal attack focus unit, Yunjin can also slot in as a normal attack buffer. And it's possible that they also have a short on field time like Ayato, so Yunjin's buff can even be shared with Chiori's normal attack playstyle. Other than that, Chiori can also just be a general flex slot as an off-field or quick swap DPS. She provides solid damage even without being able to summon her second Tomoto, and her geo damage over time can allow her to trigger crystallized shields to provide some defensive utility for your on-field unit. And if you have her C6, then that makes a Chiori hyper carry team more viable, as she can now extend her on-field time to match most standard on-field DPS units. This type of team will just focus on slotting in units that can provide the relevant buffs to greatly boost Chiori's damage. And that's it for the Chiori guide. Overall, her playstyle is quite similar to Albedo's as an off-field damage dealer, but she distinguishes herself more with some on-field capabilities and higher damage potential. She also has that Geo construct slash teammate condition, making her have more synergy with other Geos while still being capable as a general flex unit. But I'm interested to know what you think of Chiori and if you're pulling for her, so tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care.